اللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلاة والسلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ وعلى آلکہ وآصحابکہ یا حبیب اللہ صلاة والسلام علیکہ یا نبی اللہ وعلى آلکہ وآصحابکہ یا نور اللہ My dear viewers of Madan Channel, welcome to another episode of Silsila Self-Reformation. Hopefully you've already made some good intentions before watching this Silsila. Let's make some additional good intentions as our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, the intention of a moment is better than his actions. Let's make some good intentions. I will listen to the bayan attentively. Whenever I will hear the name of beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam or Sallu Al Habib or Ruskullah Tubu Ilallah, I will reply with the intention of gaining thawab. Inshallah Azza wa Jal. Sallu Al Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The Rasul of Rahmah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, Whoever recites durood upon me 100 times in night and day of Friday, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will fulfill hundreds of his needs. 70 of the hereafter and 30 of this world and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appoint an angel who will send that durood to my grave as gifts are presented to you undoubtedly my knowledge after my apparent demise will remain the same as it is in my life sallu al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam my dear viewers of madani channel our religion islam teaches us to show affection towards those who are younger than us and have lower rank and status than us. It, at the same time, it also teaches us how to respect who are older than us, more knowledgeable than us, and possess higher rank and status than us. My dear viewers of Madani Channel, almost every day, we come in contact with our elders, our parents, our grandparents, our uncles, our teachers, our mashayikh, scholars, and all those who are honorable and have great status and position than us. Our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has ordered us to show respect and reverence to them. In a hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, Show respect and reverence towards the elders and have mercy upon the young ones. You will attain my company in Jannah. This clearly identifies that those who respect the elders and those who have mercy, who have raham upon the young ones, will attain the company of beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And what great honor and status one can ask for in the hereafter other than to have the blessed company of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. In another hadith of Kanzul Imbal, our Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has said, extend your gatherings, meaning make space for a scholar due to his knowledge, for an elderly person due to his age, and for the ruler due to his status. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, it shows that respecting an elder is a means of getting salvation and the blessed company of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. Shaykh Tariqat Amir al-Sunnat, the founder of Dawat Islami, Mawlana Ilyas Attar Qadri Razavi Dawat Barakatum al-Aliyah, he writes uh, in his book, Oceanic Doom, a, a beautiful parable. He writes, Sayyidina Bayazid Bistami, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, they said, During a very cold night, my mother asked me to bring water. I went to bring a glass of water, but she had fallen asleep when I came back. I did not feel appropriate to wake her up. Therefore, I stood next to her holding the glass of water and waiting for her to wake up so that I would present it to her. I stood up for quite a while. Meantime, some water spilled over my finger and froze it, turning into ice. He says that when my mother woke up, I presented her the glass of water. He says that my finger got stuck to the glass because of the ice. As I detached my finger from the glass, its skin came off, causing bleeding. Seeing this, his mother became so happy that she made dua for him, that, Oh Allah, I'm pleased with him. You also become pleased with him. We should also follow the footsteps of our pious predecessors and show respect to our parents. Serving parents and showing respect to them are very good deeds. If we treat them nicely and show them the respect, and if they are happy, then inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with us as well. Islam teaches us to behave nicely to our parents, talking to them gently and affectionately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Bani Israel, part 15, verse 23 and 24, Translation from Kanzu Iman, treat your parents with goodness. If either of them or both reach old age in your presence, do not say, oof, any expression of disgust to them 
and do not chide them and speak to them with respect and spread for them the arms of humility with tender heart and say, My Lord, have mercy on them both as they brought me up when I was a child. My dear Vizif Mother Nishal, it is stated in tafsir of this Quranic verse that along with the order of his worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered that parents be treated kindly. There's wisdom behind it. The actual cause of the existence of human is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created him, whereas his parents are the apparent cause of his existence. His parents are the means of his existence. This is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first ordered him to reveal the actual cause of his existence, that is his creator. And then to reveal the apparent, to respect the apparent cause that is one's parent. The blessed ayah implies that your Lord has commanded you to behave kindly towards your parents because they also bestow great favors upon you. And it is, hence, it is obligatory for you to treat your parents well. When your parents have grown weak and have lost strength and health as you were weak and powerless in your childhood, so you do not even say oof to them, nor any other words of indication that you consider them to be a burden and do not rebuke them and talk gracefully, politely, and kindly. Give years of Badr channel. Through the tafsir of this Quranic ayah, we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the order to be kind to our parents and has advised us that they should be particularly looked after in their old age. Undoubtedly, our parents have bestowed great favors upon us and raised us properly after birth. When we fell sick, they were awake the entire night looking after us. They fed us halal sustenance, provided us with decent education and skills, paid our fees, endured hardship for providing us with comfort, helped us in our difficult times as much as they could. In short, if we think of the favors of our parents they have done for us, we would simply realize that they have made countless sacrifices for us. We should show gentleness towards them for the favors that they have given us. If we ever dislike what they have said, we should not rebuke them. Instead, we should, we should treat them with respect and ut utmost humility. Always show great affection towards them. Take care that they eat proper meals. If they fall sick, provide them with better treatment in case we are abroad. Still, we should not let them feel that we are away from them. Talk them, talk them on the phone. Take advantage of new technologies. We should make video calls to them, seeing them and letting them see us. My dear viewers, mother and channel, Parents in old age act like children. Sometimes it becomes extremely difficult, but remember the hardship they went through when we were young, they, the way they looked after us when we were young. Do not say even oof to them, let alone being rude to them and shouting at them, or else you may suffer a great loss. This could lead to destruction of this world and the hereafter. Sometimes the one who hurts the feelings of his parents is humiliated in this world and deserves the torment of hellfire. There was a farmer in a village. His mother and wife should, would often quarrel, would often fight with each other. Many times the wife went to her father's home walking out on her husband, but he would bring her back by flattering her. Last time his wife said to him, either I or your mother will live in this home now. The farmer was madly in love with his wife, so he decided in his heart to get rid of his mother, unfortunately, which he thought was the only solution to the frequent fighting. He once took out his mother on his sugarcane farm. While cutting sugarcane, he got an opportunity and turned upon his mother with a small axe drawn on her. But all of a sudden, his feet were sunk into the ground. The small axe dropped from his hand and mother fled to the village, shocked and shrieking. The earth gradually began to swallow him up. He continued to cry out in terror and to apologize to her, calling out, Mother, Mother, but she had gone so far away. After a short while, people reached there and saw that he had been sunk up to his chest. They made efforts to rescue him, but in vain because the earth continued to swallow him up until he was completely sunk into the ground. My dear viewers of Madani Channel, we just heard how his son was punished in consequences of having ill thoughts, of having disrespecting his mother. In our society, mothers are usually considered important to some extent, but unfortunately, fathers are completely taken for granted. It is the father who, in a sense, provides the offsprings with the blessing of a mother. The father has the burden of the entire family on his shoulder, meeting their needs and suffering hardships for them. He teaches his child how to walk and guides them how to lead an honorable life in the society. 
If Jannah lies under the feet of the mother, the father is the middle door of Jannah. Our beloved Prophet Wasallam has said, the pleasure of Allah lies in the pleasure of the father and the displeasure of Allah lies in the displeasure of the father. In another hadith, a Prophet Wasallam has said, Obedient to the Father is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disobedient to the Father is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Sunan Al-Tirmizi, our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa has said, The Father is the middle door from amongst the door of Jannah, whether you lose it or protect it. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, if a person displeases his elders, especially his parents, hurting their feelings, showing disrespect to them, treating them badly, so such a person becomes a great sinner and deserves to be punished in this world and in the hereafter. He is not considered an honorable person in the society. Remember, our relation with our parents require that we must show respect towards our maternal grandmother, maternal grandfather, paternal grandmother, paternal grandfather. In fact, we should treat every aged person with respect. We don't we know them or we don't know them. We should treat every individual with respect. Islam attaches great importance to the respect and honor of the elderly people. This is a unique quality and feature of Islamic society. Islam does not allow anyone to turn out the elderly people considering them to be a burden and to spend them to any old people's home. This is the distinguished feature of Islam that teaches and encourages the young people to show respect and reverence to the aged and to preserve their honor and to take care of them. In the past era, if any young person walked ahead of any old person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make him sink into the ground due to disrespect. It is stated in a narration that a young person who reveres an elderly person due to his age, in exchange for it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make anyone else respect him, meaning that is the young person. We should show respect to our elders, obey the elders immediately so that we can attain respect in the world and save ourselves from disgrace of the hereafter. Our pious predecessors would advise their followers and admirers to show respect and reverence towards their elders. Having completed his studies, Sayyidina Yusuf bin Khalid Basri, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, a student of Imam Azam, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, sought permission to go to his city Basra. Imam Azam, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, replied, stay for some days. Let me advise you about those important matters that you have to deal with, such as meeting people, recognizing the status and knowledge of individuals, rectifying the nafs, taking care of people, establishing friendship with ordinary and extraordinary people, and, and being aware of the situation that ordinary people face. When you leave after you've gained the knowledge, you should always follow my advice which will improve your knowledge and protect it from faults. When you enter Basra, people will greet you and will come to see you. They will recognize your status you rightfully deserve. You should also show respect and honor to them in view of their rank and position. Show respect to the noble people, reverence to the knowledgeable people, honor and respect towards the elders and affection towards the young ones. My dear viewers of Madani Channel, we've just heard the great spiritual guide of hundreds of millions of followers of Hanafi school of thought. Imam Azam rahmatullahi ta'ala advised his student to show respect towards the elders and affection towards the young ones. Remember, those who show respect towards the elders are also considered honorable in the society. And sometimes even big sinners are blessed with forgiveness for respecting the elders. A sinner was once washing his hands and face, sitting at a riverbank. In the meantime, the great spiritual guide of millions of Hanbali Muslims, Imam Ahmad bin Hamma rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, arrived there and sat at a short distance from him. And he started making wudu. Then the person noticed that the water used by him was flowing towards the great blessed saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not like it and he sat where the water used by Imam Ahmad bin Hamal rahmatullahi ta'ala was flowing towards him. Meaning that he came down so that he could use the flowing water after it was used by Imam Ahmad bin Hamal rahmatullahi ta'ala how greatly he was rewarded for this blessed act of respecting a blessed saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he passed away. Someone saw him in his dream and asked, how was he treated? How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with him? He replied, by the blessing of showing respect to Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi ta'ala.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven me. Subhanallah. My dear viewers of Madani channel, it is learned that the act of disrespecting the elders result in our own loss. An act of respecting the elders results in our own benefit. It is saying of an Arabic poet, whatever a person attained, it is only due to the virtue of showing respect. And whatever a person lost, lost only due to not showing respect. Undoubtedly, those who respect their elders from the bottom of their hearts are considered honorable and eminent in society. People begin to show devotion towards them and their admirers keep increasing. And after all, when there's a time to show respect towards the elders become dignified and distinguished in this world. Our teachers are also included in our elders. Our pious predecessors, rahimahumullah ta'ala, used to show great respect and reverence to their teachers. And in the presence of their teacher, they would remain silent and would continue learning. And some would show such deep respect for the teachers that they would not give ruling in their lifetime of their teachers as they considered it as disrespect. Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala said to a Qurayshi, go to Masjid Nabawi, there you will see a people sitting with utmost respect and concentration as if birds are sitting on their heads. Learn that this is the gathering of Sayyidina Imam Abu Abdullah Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Further, he radiallahu ta'ala commented, the gathering will be absolutely free from jokes and fun. Similarly, when anyone would ask any question to Sayyidina Sahal bin Abdullah rahmatullahi ta'ala le, he rahmatullahi ta'ala le, would not reply. Once he rahmatullahi ta'ala le, suddenly sat leaning his back against the wall and said to people, ask me today whatever you want. People humbly said, what is the matter today? You are not inclined to answer any of the questions. He rahmatullahi ta'ala le, said, it was due to the respect of my teacher, Sayyidina Zunnun Misri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. I used to avoid answering the question until he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala was alive. People were greatly surprised listening to him because as per their knowledge, Sayyidina Zunnun Misri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala was still alive. Anyhow, upon this reply, date and day was immediately noted and the reports came later, just a little while before his words that Sayyidina Zunnun Misri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala had passed away. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, we should show respect to our teachers because they have done great favors to us. Through education, they help us distinguish between good and bad, make us a good and important citizens of our society, and they try to improve our conduct and character. So then Ibn Mubarak Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said, in comparison to acquire more knowledge, we need to acquire more adab, more respect. While teaching the respect of teachers, Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said, students should not precede the teacher in conversation. In his absence, he should not sit at his place. When spending on his teacher, he should not show stinginess. It means whatever teacher requires, he should present it to him by all means. And when the teacher accepts it, he, the student, should consider it his favor and privilege. Rights of teachers should be given preference above the rights of all Muslims and parents. Even though if he has learned even a single word from his teacher, he should show humbleness before him. If the teacher is inside the house, he should not knock at the door, rather wait for him to come out. Students should not let any trouble cause to his teacher on his part because if the teacher receives any trouble from any student, he remains deprived of the blessings of the knowledge. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, the teacher is blessed with the status of spiritual father. Therefore, students should seek knowledge from their teacher while keeping the respect of teacher in view. It is stated in Tafsir Kabir, teacher is more affectionate to his student than his parents because the parents protect him from fire of the world and troubles, whereas as teacher saves him from the hellfire and calamities of the hereafter. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala ala wa sallam. We have many different relationships in our life, my dear viewers of Madani channel. Elder brother is another relationship. Sayyidina Jarir bin Hazim rahmatullahi ta'ala said that once I had a dream that my head is in my hands. For the interpretation of the dream, I told my dream to Sayyidina Imam Ibn Sirin Rahmatullahi Ta'ala who had great expertise in dream interpretation. He Rahmatullahi Ta'ala inquired me if any one of my parents was alive. I replied in the negative. Then he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala inquired whether I had any elder brother. I responded in positive. He Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said, Fear Allah in his matter, treat him gracefully and do not cut off ties with him. My dear viewers of Madani Channel, 
the elder brother's respect is in peril to the father. But after listening to this, the elder brother should also not make his mind that only young ones should pay him respect whether he becomes harsh to them, whether he humiliates them in front of others. If they happen to commit any mistake, he starts swearing and punishing them. To keep his awe and aggression, he gazes at them angrily at all times. Remember, Islam has illustrated the rights and etiquettes of everyone, while the young ones have been urged to show respect to the elders. Elders have been commanded to treat the younger ones with affection. Our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala has said, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَيُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا وَيَعْرِفْ لَنَا حَقَّنَا He is not amongst us who does not have mercy on our young ones and does not respect our elders and does not know the rights of a Muslim. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala has said, show respect to the elders, have mercy on the young ones. You and I will come on the day of judgment like this. He sallallahu ta'ala joined his fingers together. Subhanallah, what a great advantage, what a great blessing one gets for showing respect to the elders and for showing love and affection to the young ones. My dear viewers of Madani channel, adopt the Madani environment of Dawah Islami. This Madani environment of Dawah Islami, it, it not only teaches you to respect your elders, to have mercy towards the young ones, to treat the young ones nicely, but at the same time, you will gain a practical experience while you travel in Madani Qaflas, how to respect people. What are the etiquettes in respect of parents? What are the etiquettes in respect of other family members? How to treat our young ones with love, with humility, with, with politeness, and, and much more more. Travel in the Madani Qaflas of Dawat Islami. Associate yourself in the Madani environment of Dawat Islami. And inshallah, Azawajal, you will learn a lot. This will be another stride in your path to self-reformation. And inshallah, Azawajal, this respecting the elders and treating young ones with humility, love and affection will make us successful in this dunya and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to act upon what we've learned today. Amin bijahin nabin amin sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Allah reform my heart take my hand guide me